murder mystery movies from the 1930s and 1940s, Hastings Mystery Theatre. Before we get on with the show, please remember to give a thumbs up for this movie, and subscribe and select the notification bell if you've not done so already. Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater, The Wayne Murder Case, it's a 1932 mystery thriller. A police lieutenant and a reporter investigate a series of murders committed by a hooded killer, in an old dark house. Starring Regis Toomey, Dwight Fry, and Jason Robard Sr. What was it like to go to the movies in the 1930s? The experience of going was like an insidious tempting candy we could never get quite enough of. The visit to the dark theater was an escape from the drab realities of the Depression-era living, and we were entranced by the never-ending variety of stories. Even at the Great Depression's lowest point, 60 to 80 million Americans attended the movies each week, and in the face of doubt and despair, movies helped sustain national morale. Although the screwball comedy was the most popular movie genre of the 1930s, the western was the most popular B-movie genre, by far a movie viewer favorite lasting into the 1940s. Murder mystery movies however, were popularized in the early 20th century before film even had sound. Taking inspiration from the 19th century works of Edgar Allan Poe and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and later, Agatha Christie, the popularity of these detective stories lasted well into the 1940s. Hastings Mystery Theater, where time travel is possible. Come with us as we take you back to a simpler time, back through the corridors of mystery, with murder mystery movies from the 1930s and 40s. If you'd like to show your appreciation in a tangible way, then why not partner with us by giving us a one-time small donation? We'd appreciate that, as it will encourage us to keep them coming, bringing these forgotten gems to you on a regular basis. Simply click on the donate link below, in this video's description, and while you're right there you can click on our mystery merch shop as well. Or visit us on Facebook. Or find our free bonus movie link. Thank you so much. And now, here's Randall Schaefer. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1941 for a monogram release, You're Out of Luck. Frankie is an elevator operator, and his pal Jeff is a janitor in an upscale apartment building. One of the residents is murdered, and only Jeff can identify the killer. Frankie's brother is police detective assigned to the case, and the guys decide to help him along by doing their own investigating and this puts their own lives in danger. Our stars are Frankie Darrow and Mantan Moreland. From 1939 through 1941, those two teamed up for five comedy movies. Tonight is one of those five. Frankie Darrow was born in Chicago in 1917. His parents were trapeze performers. Young Frankie, Frankie quickly learned to perform on the trapeze and the high wire. The family was performing in California when their parents, his parents got a divorce. Frankie remained in California with his mother, and the movies had lots of work for a child actor who could do his own stunts. He appeared in his first movie at age six and worked steadily through the 1950s. His career declined after that, and he found less work until his death in 1976 at age 59. If you remember the sci-fi classic Forbidden Planet, it was Frankie Darrow in the robot suit. He was Robbie the Robot in that movie. 
Mantan Moreland was born in Monroe, Louisiana in 1902. At age seven, he ran away to join a minstrel show. And by age 20, he was a seasoned performer with a brilliant mind for comedy. Give him a funny script and he could improvise and make it even funnier. He died in 1973 at age 71. Let's return to 1941 and enjoy You're Out of Luck. I'll connect you in Mr. Dayton's apartment. Miss Overton, have you seen Frankie? Elevator number two is stuck again. I think he's down in the basement, Mr. Haskell. What's he doing down there? Well, you told him to fix the furnace. Oh, yes, that's right, so I did. Well, I suppose I'll have to attend to the elevator. Crime and corruption, that's all you see in the papers these days. It looks serious. Crime is always serious, Miss Overton. Thank heaven none of my tenants are criminally inclined. Why, I couldn't stand the shock if they were. Oh, dear. Where is that Frankie O'Reilly? I just told you. Oh, yes. In the basement. Have him report to me the minute he's through. Gambling ring defies police. Outrageous. Another sin. Another sin. Whoa! Oh, put those down. Six passes in a row, Mr. Frankie. Why, if you can win that, you're just wasting your time running that elevator. Yeah, but it don't make sense. Now, it says right here in the book that it can't be done. The sea biscuit couldn't do it either, but he'd done it. Yeah, but it's against the law of averages. These guys must be haywire. No, sir. Them bones is on the level. They might be partial to my way of thinking, but they ain't crooked. Yeah, well, I still maintain gambling doesn't pay. Well, even if you win, you lose. Not the way I play it. You see, I shoot for keeps. Well, that's not what I mean. Look, how often do you win when you gamble? On occasion. But how often is that? When I ain't losing. Well, you lose more than you win, don't you? Nicely. Why should I be a conception to the rule? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you read this book, you'll find out that gambling does not pay. Uh-oh, that's for me. Read them and weep, Jeff. Seven. Another seven. Mm-hmm. Why, that man is just wasting money. Wonder what is he thinking about? Well, maybe that's what he means when he say you win, you lose. Uh, good morning, Mr. Dayton. Uh, just leave it standing, gentlemen. I'll park it. We ain't staying. Does Hal Dayton come down yet, boy? Uh, no, sir, but he generally comes down every day about this time. That's what we figured. Are you gentlemen want your windshield wiped? Never mind, we like it dirty. Go on, scram. Yes, sir. Go on, beat it. Yes, sir. How are you today, Mr. Dayton? What? Oh, fine. Feeling fine. Glad to hear it. Yeah, everything is just great. Here he comes, Benny. Mr. Frankett, is he there? Well, they didn't even give him a chance. Look, get on the phone and call police headquarters and get my brother down here right away. Yes, sir, I sure will. Hurry up! City demand gambling squad shake. 
Well, now, ain't that something? Have you read the papers? Yeah, it's pretty bad, ain't it? Yeah, pretty bad. Uh, let's see who's running in the six at Oceanside today. That kid brother of yours has got himself mixed up in another murder, O'Reilly. Yeah, now what? A fellow named Dayton was just killed in an elevator over at the Carlton Arms. Hop over and see what you can find out. Yes, sir. Oh, O'Reilly, this uh, Star Tribune's after our scalps again. So watch your step. One more unsolved murder and we're cooked. I get you, Chief. Right. Let's go, Mulligan. Right behind you. Carlton Arms. I'll connect you. Hello, man. Oh, Tom. He's in the basement now. The body's down there, reading the newspapers. And all those terrible things they're saying about demanding a shake-up on the police force. Is that going to affect your chances? What, for promotion? Oh, no, that don't mean a thing. Everything's okay. Now, don't you worry. I oh, know I shouldn't. But I do. Any plans? I said everything's all right. Come on, Mulligan. All right. Get a good one in the elevator, Jack. Right, Pete. See what you can find in the garage, Mulligan. Right, Chief. Did you get his nibs in? Yeah, I got a small one. Oh, this is awful. Simply awful. A tenant of mine murdered, and while I was having tea. Oh, what a gruesome thought. Yeah, ain't it? And the scandal? Think of the scandal. What will the other tenants say? What will I tell them? How should I know? You're the manager here. You figure it out. Young man, I resent your insolence. For two cents, I'd report you to your superiors. What's your name? Uh, that's my brother, Mr. Haskell. Oh, really? No, Riley. Oh. Did you recognize either of those two mugs that got him, Frankie? No, I didn't, Tom. I ducked back in the elevator when the fireworks started. Oh, you ducked, eh? Fine cop you'd make. Well, what do you want me to do? Stand out there and make a target of myself? Uh, skip it, skip it. And what about you, Jeff? You ducked, too? No, sir, Mr. Tom. I couldn't have ducked if I wanted to. I was froze still. Yeah, then you saw the whole show. I saw it, but I wasn't looking. All I know is that off goes the gun, off goes the car, and down goes Mr. Dayton. Anything else? Oh, Mr. Tom, I wasn't in no mood to record incidentals. Yeah, but you must have seen them. Don't you remember what they looked like? It was pretty easy to me. It was two tough-looking babies, I know that. And they like dirty windshields. You're a big help. Any clues yet, Lieutenant? Give me time, give me time. Your paper will get its story. I only just started on the case. Forgive me, O'Reilly, if I overestimate your virtues as a sleuth. I thought a man of your ability were sewed up tight by now. Hey, wait a minute, you. What do you know about ability? Tom's the best detective on the force. He thinks he does protest too much. How about that, O'Reilly? Why don't you Forget dry it, up? kid. The Star Tribune's not happy unless it's finding fault with everything and everybody. You tell him, O'Reilly. You big bully. Listen, you oh, better... Wait a minute. Uh, what about Dayton's friends? You know any of them? Well, let's see. Well, sure, there's Mr. Whitney, Dayton's pal. They shared the penthouse together. Dayton's pal, huh? Yeah, hey, he might know something. Hey, sure. Did you up there now? I think so. Let's go see him. Right. Not you, not you. What do you mean, not me? Why not? I'll let you know what happens when I think it's ready for publication. Hey, Mulligan. Yeah. Okay, O'Reilly, if that's what you want. You stay here, Mulligan, and keep an eye on things. Just leave it to me, Chief. All right, come on, Jeff. Get in here. No, sir, not me. I ain't gonna get in that thing. That's the lethal chamber. Well, you stand keep Mulligan company. Yep. What are you, a bloodhound? I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm glad to know there's one member of the police force who does. You can't win. Uh, that's what Mr. Frankie says. Well, Frankie's right. A man's a fool to gamble. Ain't it the truth? I never won a dice in my life. Haven't? Never? Never. Have you, Mulligan? No. My, my. Now, ain't that a coincidence? <laughs> me neither. You don't say. Let me see those dice. Hmm, put it. Uh, would you like to join in on our conversation? Not me. Look at that, 11. Thought you said you could win. Why, you is lucky. <laughs> Look at you, there's another 11. Now you do something. Now you all right. There it is, right there.
Yeah? Your name Whitney? I don't want to know you with a lot of tiresome questions, Mr. Whitney, but, well, I know how you feel. We're trying to get a line on the fellows that murdered your friend, Mr. Dayton. Maybe you can help us. Well, I'll do my best. Won't you come in? Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. We're only going to stay a minute. Have you any idea who those two fellows were, Mr. Whitney? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, would help you remember any if I told you they were gangsters? Gangsters? Good heavens, I thought they all went to Hollywood. I don't know why gangsters or, or anyone should want to kill Hal. Well, now wait a minute. What am I, tongue-tied? If it won't throw you out of step, Mr. Hawkshaw, I'd like to ask a few questions myself. Well, go ahead. I will. Did Dayton have any enemies that you know of? No, not to my knowledge. What kind of work did he do? I... I'd rather not answer that. Why don't you tell him, Dick? It's no secret. Who's this? I, this is uh, Miss Varney. Sonia Varney. Friend of mine. Oh, a friend of Dayton's too, huh? No. No, I never met Mr. Dayton. I see. Never met him, huh? Well, I... He was a professional gambler. Now we're getting somewhere. Gambler, eh? Yeah, it's beginning to shape up. Dayton watched on a bet. That's a lie. Hal ever Wilson a bet in his life. He was as honest as they come. All right, so he was honest. Now what about these gambler friends of his? Know any of them? His friends were no concern of mine. Strikes me no mighty little about a fellow you claim was a pal of yours. Can I help it if Hal's private life was his own? Isn't it bad enough he's gone? Why can't you leave me alone? All right, all right, some other time. When you feel more like talking. You have my full sympathy, Mr. Whitney. Oh, by the way, Mr. Whitney, what do you do for a living? I... I'm retired. Retired, eh? You made your pile pretty young in life, didn't you? I'll see you later. Bunny, wonder what happened to Mulligan. You know, where's Jeff? Come on, now, it's eight for Papa. Mm. Come on, now, eight of from the cater. Mm. Mm. Don't miss him, Dad. Come on, one eight from him, now. Mm. Papa, just get this eight on you. It's too bad, dear. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's just like the book says, Jeff. You can't win. What do you think that is you got in your hand? And that peanut, you always talking about... Uh-oh, we in trouble. At it again, huh, Jeff? Didn't I tell you gambling doesn't pay? Now don't look at me. He's the one that needs a convincing. Hiya, Lieutenant. Uh, look, Chief, we... Say that. Get the car started. Yes, sir. And as for you... Now don't say it. I'll never do it again. Well, I don't know about that, Jeff. I think that... Don't go too hard with him, Tom. He's just weak. Weak? I limp. What'd you find out up there? Plenty. But we can't reveal anything just yet. But you can quote me as saying we got the situation well in well, hand and, and we expect, expect to make an, an arrest within 24 hours. Yeah. Thanks, Lieutenant. Come on, we're going to the station. Station? Police station? Yep. You mean that I was pinched for shooting crap? Well, I'm sorry, Jeff, but... Oh, Mr. Tom, I crossed my heart. I'll never do it again. Please don't let... Mr. Franklin, you're a friend of mine. Talk to Mr. Tom. Don't let him take me to jail. Well, I'd like to help you, Jeff, but it's out of my hands now. No, yeah, that's right. It's up to the judge now. Judge? Judge? What will he do? What will he do? Well, nothing. He'll just hear your case and then pass sentence on you. Oh, Mr. Franklin. Now, you know the judge, don't you? No, I don't know him, but Tom does. Oh, Mr. Tom, if you know the judge, please ask him to give me a sentence with the word freedom in it, will you, please, sir? Mr. O'Reilly, has it occurred to you that Frankie and Jeff have jobs to attend to? That they're working for me? Yeah, word. They're working for me, too. And you're giving them time off any time they need it. I certainly am you not. <laughs> I certainly am. Hey, Tom, wait a minute. What do you mean we're working for you? Well, I've got a little something I want you boys to take care of for me down at headquarters. You mean that I ain't arrested for shooting crap? Well, uh, instead of being wanted by the state, you're working for the state. Working for the state? You mean that I'm working for the government? Well, sort of. It happened. It happened at last. What happened? We've been conscripted. <laughs> hey, Mulligan, check with the bear of identification and see if they've got those cards out yet. Hey, Tom, why don't you tell us what this is all about? Yeah, what are we going to do? Look at the pictures. Pictures? Is we going to see some pictures? Sure. From the rogues gallery. Rogues gallery? That ain't what they call it when I'm sitting there. He's not talking about the balcony and the picture show. No? No, it's, it's a place where they keep criminals' photographs. Oh, gangster pictures. Yeah. I want to see if you can identify those two mugs that got Dayton. Yes, sir. I know them two gentlemen any way I'd see them. Same here, Tom. We hope. 
Come right over here, boys. Yeah, roll your eyes over these, yes? Yeah? You take a look at these, Frankie. I don't know this gentleman, and I don't know him. Oh, my goodness. Find something? I sure did, my Uncle Hogan. That boy don't change a bit. He sure can wear stripes. Say, Tom. Yeah. Look at this. The name's different, but if that's not Dick Whitney, I'll eat my hat. There's no question about it. That's Whitney, all right. Got a two-year stretch of embezzlement. What do you make of it? I don't know. Could mean a lot of things. Hmm. I wonder if he and Hal Dayton were in on some kind of a racket together. Hey, that's possible. At a quick glance, I'd say they swiped a lot of money to pay off their gambling debts. Then the fellow they swindled got wise and sent a couple of thugs to knock him off. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. Well, in that case, Whitney's number is up next. Uh, I don't know. There's something phony about him and that Varney woman. They ain't kicking in with all they know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Look, Frankie, will you do me a favor? Well, sure, Tom. Well, they're leery of me, and if they spot me hanging around, well, we never will find out anything. Oh, I get it. Then you want me to shadow them. That's right. Keep an eye on them. This Whitney fellow in particular. Find out all you can, see? And whatever you do, don't let him out of your sight. Mm-hmm. Now, you think you can handle it? Well, sure. Can't we, Jeff? Uh, Mr. Frankie. Why do I have to live my life like I was you instead of me? What am I, a zombie? He agrees. Now, it's pretty important I crack this case, Frankie. Uh, the newspapers are running us ragged. So give it all you got, will you? You know me, Tom. So do I, and it ain't helping. We'll get right on it. Good. Now, look, uh, see if you can't find those two gunmen in there, will you, Frankie? Yeah. How are you coming, Jeff? Find anything yet? Oh, just a few related. <laughs> Uh-oh. Drinkers or me? He's got it. Yeah, give me it. Give me it. Oh, y'all don't want to see this one. What do you mean you don't want to see it, man? It ain't what you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ain't funny. I wasn't trying to steal them hogs. I was just training them how to run. <laughs> Look at that face. What's the matter, honey? What do you look so worried about? Frankie, I guess. Tom, do you think it's wise to put so much responsibility on his shoulders? You mean by asking him to give me a lift in this job? Yes. I'm afraid of what he might do. He's so headstrong and impulsive. No, oh, don't worry about him. Frankie's a good kid and a smart one, too. Well, I'd rather have him in there pitching than a dozen mulligans. I suppose you know what you're doing. Sure I do. Oh, I don't like to see him mixed up in this mess any more than you do, but if I'm going to escape, I'm going to need all the help I can get. Suppose you don't crack this case, Tom. What then? Hmm, another field day for the papers, I guess. Shake up on the force, wholesale emotions, and well, anything, everything. Including all our plans going up in smoke. No, forget it. Everything's going to be all right. Why, we're going to lick this thing in nothing flat. I hope so. Sure, why, Frankie's probably on now. That'll clean up the whole shebang. Miss Frankie, come in. What's the matter with you? Something terrible going to happen. Yeah, what? I was investigating that Mr. Whitney, like you said. Did you find out anything? I had my ears to the door. Yeah? I didn't hear nothing, but I found out something just the same. Well, what? That Mr. Whitney is madder than a haunted. Why, he's packing a gun. A gun? Yes, sir. Say, he must be going after the ones that got Dayton. We gotta follow him. Come on. Just a minute, just a minute, and where do you think? But you can't stop us now, Mr. Haskell. It's very important. <laughs> Official business. That's right. It's for the police. You know, you can't bother with that. Now, look, you watch Whitney, and I'll get the car. Uh, I'll see you later. Yeah. Official business, fiddle faddle. I'll meet you at your apartment as soon as I'm through. All right. Call me a cab. Yes, sir. Cab in! trying to get away. Step on it a little. All right, you two. What's this all about? Well, gee, Mr. Whitney, uh, 
We didn't expect to find you here. Now, don't give me that. Oh, we were just trying to protect you. Protect me from what? Well, uh, we figured Mr. Dayton was your pal, and, well, with you packing a gun and everything... And you thought I might get in trouble, too, is that it? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. Well, thanks, boys. But I can take care of myself. All right, Mr. Whitney. I'm sorry, no hard feelings. Oh, now, wait a minute. You really want to help me? Well, that's what we said. Well, look. I'm going to the Ringside Club. That's a gambling place upstairs. If I'm not out in ten minutes, call the police. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, sure, I got you. Thanks. Let me speak to Johnny Burke, please. Buddy, switch this call over to Burke's office. Then I clips him with a right. Then I gives him a hard left hook, see? Boy, what a bat I'm giving this baby. Then I brings up a left, right into the solar plexus. Bam, he doubles over. Boom, I give him another left right into the jaw, see? He goes down. One, two, three. Then what do you think happens? Saved by the bell. Get it, Jaime, huh? Oh. Hello? Johnny Boyce office. For you, Johnny, it's your girlfriend. What's her name? Yeah, what's your name? It's Sonia. You have a lot of nerve calling me. Wait a minute, Johnny. I called to do you a favor. Whitney's on his way over there with a gun. Another one of your tricks, huh? No, no, Johnny. This is on the level. Okay. Thanks. He says Whitney's on his way over. He's coming over here after what we've done to Dayton? What a noise. He fooled me, all right. Better go outside and watch for him. That won't be necessary. Hello, Dick. We were just talking about you. Get these two mugs out of here. Wait outside. But I... What's on your mind, Dick? You know what's on my mind. I'm here to collect Dayton's bet. Why, sure. You didn't worry about that, did you? I was just sending one of the boys over with it. That's swell. I'll save you the trouble. Hand it over. Oh, you know. Let me do that for you. Now, what's this for? Shooting fish? Yeah. Suckers. Start counting. 60,000 bucks worth. Sure. Glad to. Sixty. Okay. Put it in this. You know, I ought to charge you 10% for keeping me waiting. They wouldn't like me to spend it for you, would you? Oh, no. That's my end of the deal. Thanks, Johnny. That's all right. Johnny Burt always pays off. Yeah. With bullets. Be good. Yeah. I'll be sick. Show you to a table, sir. Mr. Burke will join you later. Yes, I think I will take a table. Facing the door. Right. You'd better bring me a double bourbon. Yes, sir. If you need anything else, I'll be right outside that door.
know. He's been in there over ten minutes already. Don't you think we better call the police like he said? Why? Well, you know the man's what said. What do you think we're here for? That's what I've been asking myself ever since we arrived. Now, look here, Mr. Franklin. You ain't going in there, is you? Well, sure. Why not? Well, suppose we can't get out there like Mr. Whitney. Well, then there'd only be one thing for us to do. We'd have to stay in. Stay in? Think it fuss, we got to get in. And that's the line. Jeff, I said we're going in. Oh, Mr. Frank, it doesn't. We has to. And besides, how are we going to get in there with these clothes? Gee, I never thought of that. Look, you let me handle it. Let you handle it? Let you handle it? Every time I let you handle something, I get the left hole in the bag. Mr. Frank, don't start that now. Hey, Jeff. Look, now if anybody stops us, you let me do the talking. If anybody stops us, I won't be able to talk. Come on. What are you doing in here? Oh, well, uh, if you're looking for a job, we're fresh out. Oh, no, no. Uh, we're not looking for a job. We're, uh, we're the new entertainers. Oh, entertainers. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Show them, Jeff. Da -da, da -da, da -da, oh. da -da. That's enough. Stop. Who hired you? Oh, uh, who hired us? Uh, uh, Mr. Travis from the Crans Agency. Oh, uh, who? Uh, 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 from the Crans Agency. Is that so? I thought he went to Chicago. Oh, yeah, he went to Chicago. Yeah, but he come back last night. Uh, nice fellow. Uh, uh, look, uh, we're late now. Will you tell us where our dressing room is? Well, on the left as you go in. Thank you very much. Come on. Frank, what's that man named that hired us? Uh, George Washington. George? Mr. Frank, I know better than that. There's Mr. Whitney. Hello. You call the police? Well, well, no, I didn't. I thought that it was stupid. Do you realize I'm in the spot here? I've got both entrances covered. Cook, the minute I step out of this place, unless I get help from the police. Oh, well, don't worry. I'll have the police here before you know it. Wait a minute. If anything happens to me, get this to Dayton's sister. And nobody else. Understand? You bet. Them two men to kill Mr. Dayton. Yeah, waiting to give me the same medicine. Mr. Frankie, come on, let's get out of here. Come on. See you later. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, I wonder if they put something over on me. Hey, Jeff, you got change for a dime? I ain't got the nine cents. Oh, well, let me have it. You owe me a penny. Hello, police headquarters. Let me talk to Lieutenant Tom O'Reilly. Hello, O'Reilly talking. Oh, hello, Frankie. Yeah, what is it, John, or something? Am I? Well, now look. Nice going, kid. Yeah. Well, where is it? We'll meet you there. Mulligan. You want me, Chief? Yeah, call out the riot squad. We're raiding the ringside club. Oh, right, huh? Oh, boy, that's for me, action. Yeah, well, get going, come on. You sure this is the place? Yeah, this is it. Hey, Mulligan, take your men, cover the rear. The rest of you come with me. Come on, Frankie. That must be the door down there. All right, break it in. Find a switch to turn on the light. Well, that's funny. Oh, Mulligan, Mulligan. Oh, excuse me, boss. Imagine me taking you for a mobster. Do I look like a mobster? Uh, if y'all talking about them things that's got clothes, Mr. Tomeo's face is as red as one. 
Hey, boss, this ain't no nightclub. It's dead as a doornail. Yeah, ain't it, though? Yeah, but, but wait a minute. I don't get it. No, neither do I. And I don't like practical joking. Oh, but look, Tom, this is not a... Why, I would tell you I was here just a few minutes ago and the place was jammed with people. Yeah, people was all over the place and Mr. Whitney was right in the middle of them. Yeah, would you mind showing me exactly where Mr. Whitney was? Well, sure, come here. Now, look, there was a table right here. Right here. Mr. Whitney was sitting on this side. Oh, no, right Mr. Franklin. This is where the fat man was with the lady with the red hair. Yeah, wait a minute now. Yeah, I think you're right, Jeff. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's see then. Right here. Yeah, like that. But they were sitting down, see? Squat down, that's it. Yeah, that's right. They were sitting down. All right. Let's see, there was a table there. One there and... Oh, here. This is where it is, right here. All right, come on. But, Mr. Franklin, now you wrong. What do you mean? See, that's where the man with the mustache was and the lady had the black dress on was sitting. All right, wait. We'll get the whole thing straight. Now, now, squat down, that's it. Yeah, they were sitting down. Now, you, come here. Now, get that way. Now, squat down. Squat down. Now, look. If you don't mind, just where was Mr. Whitney sitting? Yeah, what about it? Well, Mr. Whitney was standing right where you is now. Right here. Yeah, only he was squatting down. Now, he had a glass in his hand. A glass in his hand. Yeah, that's right. He was drinking. Yeah, and then what happened? Well, he was telling us about what a jam he was in with those two gunmen. Yeah, the gunman was right over there. Yeah, right there. What's that? Gentlemen, the Star Tribune thanks you. O'Reilly goes to a party. Riot Squad raids haunted house. Arrests invisible man. You ought to be proud of yourself. Now listen, Captain. You listen. There's more to this. While the octopus of crime and corruption held the city in its vice-like grip, the Riot Squad last night, led by Detective Lieutenant Tom O'Reilly, got tired of it all and went off on a binge having the time of their life playing squat tag in a haunted house. You want to hear any more? No, 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 that, that's enough. I don't want to hear any more about it. tank. Oh, you know better than that. Well, Cap, the papers yelling their heads off. We're walking on eggs. And you pull a stunt like this. All right, have it your way. I'm in the doghouse. I'll say you're in the doghouse. You get the Dayton killers and find Whitney quick. Or you'll find yourself back pounding the beat. I'll get busy. Yes, sir. Wonder what's in that letter, Mr. Frankie? I don't know, Jeff. But if those thugs are willing to kill Mr. Whitney for it, must be pretty valuable. That's right. Uh, maybe it's telling you who killed Mr. Dayton. No, I thought of that. It's too heavy and thick to be just a letter. I know one sure way of finding out. Jeff, what are you doing? Now look what you did. Look, Mr. Frankie, look at that. Whew. Well, there must be thousands. Thousands. Uh, Mr. Frankie. Uh, so I'll know, would you kindly tell me how much money that is, speaking in terms of poke chops? It's, it's plenty in any language. $60,000. But don't you think we better turn that over to the police so them gangsters won't start shooting at us? Look, we promised Mr. Whitney we'd give this to Joyce Dayton, and we're going to do it. But we can't just run around here with all that kind of money. I don't intend to. Uh, don't put the that, Mr. Frank, it'll burn. Well, we don't use the furnace this time of the year. I know, but... Now look, never mind. It's safe enough there till we find a better spot. I'm all in for finding a better spot right now. I have to get on the phone and call Tom at police headquarters right away and let him know about this. Things is getting worse and worse. Yeah! Yes, sir, I'm coming. Crowd and arms. One moment, please. Mr. Whitney, please. Who shall I say is calling? Miss Dayton. Joyce Dayton. Mr. Whitney doesn't answer. Would you care to wait? No. No, I'll call back later after I've checked in at my hotel. Thank you. Frankie, guess who was just here? Hal Dayton's sister. No kidding, Joyce Dayton? Is that the lady Mr. Whitney told us? Wait a minute. Does she know about her brother? I imagine so. She wanted to see Mr. Whitney. He wasn't in, huh? Oh, well, that's bad. What's bad? Well, uh, nothing, nothing at all. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, she said she'd call back. Oh, swell, look. Now, when the call comes in, let me know right away, will you? That's if Mr. Whitney doesn't get here first. Yes, but what's this all about? Oh, well, this? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Thank you, Riley. Enough is enough. Will you see, Mr. Hammond? Now, don't I'm... talk back. We're going to settle this right here and now. Either you're working for the police or you're working for me. Well, I was only trying make to... Make up your mind, make up your mind. Speaking for yours truly, Mr. Haskell, 
I've did enough of detecting to last me for months or Sunday. Yes, sir. I guess it goes for me, too. Well, that's better. Now, get back on the job. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, Frankie, Dan's elevator is stuck. He's not here today. You'll have to fix it. I'll attend to it right away, sir. Yes, sir. These elevators are always going haywire. Maybe the emergency switch locked accidentally. Emergency switch? What's that? It's that little thing right there. You see, if an elevator ever gets out of control, well, you pull that switch. It stops all the machinery, and, well, the elevator stops. Just like that. In the middle of the air? Yeah, that's right. Well, I do declare. That would be a handy gadget to put on an airplane, wouldn't it? It's a handy gadget right here. It prevents lots of accidents. It's a good thing for you to remember, too. Look, if you ever get in any trouble in an elevator, just pull that switch. It won't be necessary. That ain't never gonna happen to me. My stomach won't allow me to be no elevator operator. No, sir. Let me check this. That seems to be all right. That's funny. Maybe the cables are jammed. Give me a hand, will you, Jeff? Woo! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Mr. Whitney! I'll be seeing you. The marks on the bullet that got Whitney are the same as the ones that got Dayton. That means he was plugged by the same gun. Mr. O'Reilly, can't you hurry and get this awful business over with? Keep your shirt on. Tom, what makes you so sure that he was killed up here? Well, it looks like the body was dropped from quite a distance. So it's my guess the body was thrown down the elevator shaft from his own reception hall. But I'll know definitely as soon as I get the autopsy report from the coroner. Mm -hmm. Well, what about... Oh, there he is now. Hello, Jake, on that report... For you, Frankie. For me? Yeah, you. Why can't you have your girlfriends call you up after business hours? Hello. Yeah, this is Frankie. Frankie, this is Joyce Dayton. Hal Dayton's sister. Oh, I've been trying so hard to reach you. It's Joyce Dayton. We'll find out what she wants. She never did come down to the station. Uh, hello, Miss Dayton, miss. Yeah, I've been trying to get a hold of you, too. Well, then you have the money? Yeah, sure. Uh, Mr. Whitney gave it to me and said to give it to you. Oh, that's wonderful. Will you bring it over to me right away? Yeah, sure. Where are you? Marietta Apartments. Apartment 436. All right. I'll be over as soon as I can. I'll wait for you. Goodbye, Frankie. She wants me to bring the money over. What money? Well, the money that uh, Mr. Whitney gave me at the ringside club. Yeah, how much was it? Mm, 60 grand. What? 60 grand? Yeah. Well, why haven't you told me about this before? Well, I didn't have a chance. I just found out what it was myself a little while ago. Well, what would you do with it? I hid it downstairs in the furnace. In the furnace? You hid that money in the furnace? Sure, what's wrong with the furnace? Uh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Uh, I burn any trash in the furnace. What? <gasps> Mulligan, you stay here. I'm uh, Mr. Frankie. I'm uh, Mr. Frankie. Mr. Frankie. Mr. Frankie. Mr. Frankie, don't go down there, Mr. Frankie. Mr. Why don't you listen to me? Well, it's too late. It's gone. There goes $60,000 up in smoke. Yeah, you should have known better than to hide anything in a place like that. Well, what do you want? I always said it was expensive heating in the popping house. Mr. Frankie, Mr. Frankie. Take your time, Jeff, take your time. It's gone. No, it ain't. What? That's what I tried to tell you upstairs, but you wouldn't listen to me. Oh, cut it out, will you? This is no time for jokes. No, this is the truth. I got nervous about that money and man, so I brung it out and tucked it away. You tucked it away? Go. Sure. Where, Jeff, where? Over there in that washing machine. In the washing machine? Sure. Good boy, Jeff, good boy. Holy smoke, today is Monday. Come on. Well, come on. We'll open it. Open it. Open it. What? How do you like that? Boy, we got here just in time. A few more seconds, I'd been soaked to a pulp. Hiya, boys. Washing out your filthy lucre? I might have known it. The Star Tribune again. Well, what do you want? I was sent out to do the murder. Well, you're too late. The murder's already been done. What's cooking? The, the body was found over there on the elevator. Why don't you go over? Maybe you can get a picture of Whitney's ghost. <laughs> Come on, Pop. Tell me where the body was found. Hey, this is an awful lot of money. Are you supposed to turn the whole lot over to Dayton's sister? Yeah, that's right. That's what Mr. Whitney said when he gave it to me. He, he put her name on the envelope. Now, ain't that something? Me ringing out a $1,000 bill just like it was dirty soft. It just don't make sense. You see, I was looking for her when... Say, wait a minute. How would she know about me? Yeah, what do you mean? Something fishy about this. 
Joyce Dayton doesn't know me from Ellie. And yet when I... Tom, I've got it. Yeah, what? It, it's a trick, a gag. They want to trap me with his money. Yeah, maybe you're right. I know I'm wrong. That wasn't Joyce Dayton. It was some other girl. Maybe Sonia Barney or, or one of those gangsters more. Uh-huh. Huh. They must have thought I was pretty dumb to fall for a gag like that. Here, give me this money. This belongs to the state now. And I'm putting it on ice down at headquarters. And if that's Joyce Staten or anyone else has got a claim to it, they can come down there and get it. Now look, Frankie, you stay here and keep me posted if anything else turns up. You bet I will, Tom. What are you doing? I thought maybe it might be a little loose change floating around here. But that's all there is. There ain't no more. Say, Jeff, wait a minute. I bet you Tom forgot about that phone call. What phone call? You know, the one he got from the girl said she was Joyce Dayton. That might be important. It ain't to me. Yeah, that's what you think. Come on, we're going to remind him. Come on, boys. Back to work. Yes, sir. Marjorie, has Tom left yet? He left just a minute ago on his way down to headquarters. Mm, gosh, then he did forget. Look, the best thing for us to do is go down there. Uh, Mr. Frank, what for? To protect Tom. At a time like this, he can't afford to miss a single bet. I thought you done took a pledge to not to do no more detecting. Well, it'll only take us an hour. Come on. And who's going to run your elevator while you're gone? Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Haskell. Thank you. Come on. Hey, where are they going in such a hurry? I don't know, but something's in the wind. That's a cinch. Come on. Don't you ever wear down? Our service on behalf of the press is, as always, tireless. All right, news hound. If you must know, I'm going up to see my girl. Now, print that. Good. We'll go along. Maybe she's got some new recordings. I love music. Yeah, you would. Oh, this is it. Look, why don't you go away? This is private. Go right ahead. We won't get in your way. Yeah. Uh... Well, looks like somebody beat us to the punch. I'm gonna get out of here before somebody starts to punch again. Tom! What happened? Uh -oh. Hold it. Just send in your names and addresses and the Star Tribune will mail you a copy of the picture. Philanthropist loomed on the constabulary scene today when Lieutenant Tom O'Reilly, pride of the local detective squad, donated $60,000 to the worried and poverty-stricken underworld. In return for the compliment, the grateful underworld entertained him with rope tricks. It was a great sport for all except Lieutenant O'Reilly, who wound up in a tangle of knots. Oh, I'd like to get my hands on that reporter. Why do they have to persecute Tom like this? He was only trying to do his duty. Sure, but somebody's got to be the goat for those newspapers. Well, it was just his luck to be it. It's so unfair. It sure is, Miss Marjorie. With all that money they're taking from Mr. Tom, they didn't leave him a nickel to phone the police. Carlton Arms. Who? Well, this is Joyce Dayton. Are you sure my brother didn't leave anything for me? Not that I know of, Miss Dayton. Dayton? Is that Joyce Dayton? Let me talk to her. Hello, Miss Dayton. This is Frankie O'Reilly. I'm investigating your brother's murder. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Uh, now just what was it he was supposed to leave for you? Well, it... It was money. I came here purposely to get it. Oh, uh -huh, I see. Uh, well, look, Miss Dayton, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Where are you now? Take this down. Halifax Hotel, 12th and Main. Mm, I see. Well, I'll meet you there outside in about a half hour. All right. Fine, thank you. Goodbye. Hmm. What do you think of that? I think it's none of your business. 
None of my business. Well, I'm Tom's assistant, ain't I? Not anymore, Frankie. I'm off the case. Tom, what happened? That uniform. Well, what do you think? You mean they busted you back to the ranks? Yep. Oh, Tom, they couldn't. It wasn't your fault. Well, they think it was. I, I guess they're right. I should have gone there alone with all that money. Why, the big stiff. You've worked years to land that spot. I know, but... Look, they're not going to get away with it. You and I will bust this case wide open right underneath their noses. Then they'll have to give you your job back. Look, after what's happened, I'm lucky to be pounding a beat. I want to keep this job. So do me a favor and let well enough alone, will you? I got a plan. It's an order. Okay. Okay, have it your way. Well, I've got to get back in my rounds. See you later. And you heard what I said. I heard, but I ain't listening. Mr. Tom, he's lucky. They just demoted him, but they can't demote me because I can't get no lower than I am. Well, I'll quit moaning, will you? Come on. I beg your pardon. Are you Miss Dayton? Yes, I... You're not Mr. O'Reilly, are you? Oh, well, yeah, sure. Why not? You seem so young to be a detective. Oh, oh, that. Uh, well, I, I just look young, that's all. Uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Dayton, he's right. We ain't what we look like on the surface. Oh, oh, pardon me. This is Jefferson, my assistant. How do you do? I do, ma'am. Well, now that we all know each other, uh, what do you say we get down to business? Well, you brought the package, of course. Oh, well, the package will, uh, no, you see. Oh. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Miss Dayton. There was an accident. An accident? Well, no, not exactly an accident, but, well, we kind of, uh... Shall we get in the car? Where are we going? Oh, uh, we'll go see my brother. He's on the force, too. He used to be a detective, like we ain't, but think we is. And I wish we didn't. Don't pay any attention to him. He's talking through his hat now. Will you get in? You get in the rumble seat, Jeff. Yes, sir. Look, Miss Dayton, we thought maybe you could give us a clue, you know, to kind of help us find the men that stole that money. Well, I don't know how. I only just got to town. I don't know anybody. Oh, I see. Well, well, look, didn't your brother ever mention anyone in these letters? I mean, you know, beside Mr. Whitney? Not that I remember. No, wait a minute. He did mention someone to quite frequently. Who? A man named Burke. Burke? You don't mean Johnny Burke. Yes, that's it. Mr. Frankie, ain't that the man that keeps his name in the paper all the time, that big gambler? Sure, Jeff, that's it. Johnny Burke, the king of the gamblers. Jeff, it works. It fits. Uh-oh, now I done started something. Why don't I learn to keep my big mouth shut? That's just it. Now, Johnny Burke had a couple of his gorillas go out and say, Jeff, you know all the gambling spots in town, don't you? Now what's coming? Well, don't you? Well, I got a vague idea. All right, swell. Where's Johnny Burke's place? Now, that's the one that I'm vague about. Oh, uh, you're a great help. There must be somebody that knows. Well, what about that lady, uh, Miss Bonnie? That's Mr. Burke's lady friend. No, she's out. She moved. Besides, how do you know she's Mr. Burke's lady friend? Well, my lady friend is Mr. Burke's lady friend's maid. Why didn't you say so? Well, nobody asked me. All right, what's her address? Uh, the Haywood apartment, uh, number 203. Now you're talking. I got to get to a telephone. Ralph Norms. Oh, hello, Frankie. No, Tom hasn't been in. Yeah, well, when he comes in, you tell him I'm hot on the trail of that money. I think Johnny Burke's got it. Take down this address. Haywood Apartment, number 203. Okay, Frankie, I'll tell him as soon as he gets in. Who is it? Well, it's me, Miss Barney, Frankie O'Reilly. What do you want? Well, uh, I'd like to ask a favor of you, if you don't mind. What kind of a favor can I do you? Well, uh, may we come in for a minute? All right. Thank you. Oh, uh, this is Miss Dayton, Hal Dayton's sister. This is Miss Varney. How, How do, do you do? do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. This, uh, favor you want wouldn't have anything to do with that money, would it? Well, well, yes, it does. You see, we need that money pretty bad. Well, I thought maybe you could tell us where we could find Johnny Burke. Are you crazy? See these bags? 
Your pal Burke's given me just 12 hours to get out of town. That's for crossing him up once. If I did it again, it'd be curtain. But I, I don't think you understand, Miss Barney. You see, all we wanted you to do was tell us where we could find him. Well, he wouldn't know you had anything to do with it. Please, Miss Barney. It's terribly important to all of us. Look, kid, this money you're after cost your brother his life. Why don't you forget about it before the same thing happens to you? Oh, then it was Johnny Burke. Sure it was. But why? What did Hal do? He framed Burke, that's all. Half the money he was holding for you. He just played a long shot on some advance information. Oh, then Burke got wise to the whole setup and refused to pay off. You hit the nail right on the head. When he and Whitney try to collect anyhow, Burke's gunman got him. Well, how come they let you go? Oh, well, sentimental reasons. Johnny and I were old pals. Uh-oh, that must be Mr. Tome. He sure did get you quick. I'm not so sure. Yes? Open up, Tanya. What do you want? We just dropped in to make sure you caught that train. Hey, what are they doing here? Oh, they're, they're friends of mine. They came up to say goodbye. Yeah, you said it. Goodbye is right. What are you going to do? Well, I ain't calling Santa Claus. Hello, Mac. Let me talk to Johnny Boyd. Almost ready to leave, honey? Oh, Tom, Frankie called a while ago. Yeah, what do you want? I'm worried. He said something about going up to Johnny Burke's for that money. Johnny Burke's? Hey, then the kid was onto something. A hey, mulligan. Yeah? He's not only traced that money, he's found a tie-up with those killings. What a chump I am. Yeah. He's at the Hayward Apartments. I think he expects you to meet him there. I'll say I'll meet him there with bells on. Get headquarters. Hey, wait a minute, Tom. Uh -huh. You ain't gonna let that kid lead us off on another... Johnny Burke, he's in trouble. I know, but look what happened last time. Another bum rap and we'll be out on our ears completely. Yeah, and what am I supposed to do? Stand by and let him get killed trying to pull me out of a hole? There's your call, Tom. Okay. Hello. Where be? Hey, it's spring. Listen to the Floyd. You mean bird. Yeah. Well, it choice like a boy. Oh, what's going on here, anyhow? How long do we have to stay around this place? Am I going to have trouble with you? Oh, lay off him, Benny. No, blame him for being on pins and needles. I am, too. Yeah, well, you ought to be. You'll laugh out of the other side of your face when Johnny gets here and finds out what you're trying to pull. I'll take my chances on that. Look, Johnny told me to be on that train, and he meant it. Don't worry, sister. You're going for a ride. But it ain't going to be on no train. This is a fine mess you've gotten us into. What kind of a detective are you, anyhow? What kind of a what? That squirt a detective? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> You've been kidding you, sister. He ain't nothing but a jockey for an elevator. A jockey for an elevator? What made you do a thing like Oh, now, wait a minute, Miss Dayton. They, they just got you all excited. It, it's not as bad as it seems. Well, I guess I'll have to admit I'm not a real detective, but... Johnny... Tell these mugs to lay off me. They're going to make me miss my train. I told you what would happen if you double-crossed me again. I wasn't trying to double-cross you, Johnny. Honest. She's telling the truth, Mr. Burke. Isn't that the sprout who's been giving us all the trouble? Yeah, that's him. You must be out of your mind keeping him here. Don't you know his brother's a cop? Oh, what difference does that make? They ain't never been able to pin nothing on us. Oh, you stupid idiot. They saw you gun down Dayton. You're holding them here against their will. That's kidnapping. I never thought of that. Johnny, we had to do something. That's Dayton's sister. She might be wise up to the whole deal. So you are Dayton's sister. Getting in over your head must run in the family. Just how much do you know? You let her alone. She doesn't know anything. Ah, shut him up. Let me alone, you big lug. All right, you got us up here. Now, what are you going to do about it? What do you think I ought to do with you? Well, after what you did to Mr. Whitney and Mr. Dayton, that shouldn't be very hard to figure out, should it? Well, why are you all figuring out what's going to happen? I've got business elsewhere. Stick around, Masters. Oh, don't get excited, mister. I'm sticking. You better send a couple of boys around to Miss Dayton's room. Tell him to look around for papers and letters she might have. How do you know where I live? You'd be surprised at what I know. Johnny, the cops! They're pulling a raid! You little rat. You stage this. I'll take care of you later. Come on, this way. You'll take the freight elevator. All right, get going. Come on, come on. Come on, keep moving. Get in there. Go on, go on, get going. Hurry it up, the cops are right behind us. Hurry up, Jack. 
Hey, they've taken the elevator. We'll split up and get them either way they've gone. This way. Say, Jeff, we're, we're sure in trouble. Sure is. Yes, but uh, we're in trouble in an elevator, Jeff. You ain't lying. Jeff, what do people usually do when they get in trouble in an elevator? Uh, they pull the emergency switch. What, this? Yeah, pull it, Jeff, quick! Okay. Never mind that, Johnny. Get this thing started. The cops are after us. So let me get out of here. Come on, let me out of here now. Let me get out of here. Come on, let me out of here. Okay, now. open it up. Let me out of here. Come on, get it open. Let me out of here. Open the door. Come on, Come on let me out. Good gracious me. Compliments of the Star Tribune. Come out with your hands up. Yeah, keep them up. Come on. Get over there, over there. All right, Frankie? Yeah, sure. Come nice on. work, Tom. Thanks, kid. All right, come on, let's go. Mr. Tome, you sure do take a good picture. Yeah, go on. Now, Jeff, take a good look at that. It should be a lesson to you. Remember what I told you, gambling does not pay. You is absolutely correct, Mr. Frankie. It sure don't. You mean that? I cross my heart. Mr. Frankie, I'll never... How did them dice get back in my pocket? I threw them away once. Uh, gambling again, eh? Just no, sir. Do no. you know what these mean? I, I, I ain't never... Uh, uh, those are mine, Mr. Haskell. Yeah, they're mine. Good gracious me. Excuse us, will you? Jeff, come here. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Look. See these little things? Well, if I ever catch you with another pair, I'm going to break you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Hi there. I'm Randall Schaefer. You see me, most of you see me, on YouTube, hosting Hastings Mystery Theater. And this shirt honors Hastings Mystery Theater. If you would like a souvenir of this shirt or other similar products, take a look at the description down below. You can get yourself a souvenir. Thank you to all the YouTube people who watch us. We appreciate it. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again for your kind support that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. I don't know who you are, my friend. You stand still, I'll shave you. you've just sat down to watch a nice flick, and next thing you know this stupid advertisement interrupts. The one, was bad enough, but then, another. Try our super drug, Silo Press Beating His Own Side effects include, paralysis, vomiting, blindness, amnesia, convulsions, cancer and sudden death. Then still another. Get what's coming to you. Call 1-800-SCAM. Get taken advantage of, Einstein, Shyster and Associates. We know you don't want your movie disrupted by a lot of nonsense. Nope. So instead of ads to pay our expenses, we've chosen to receive your donations instead. No pressure at all. Just an option you might want to consider. Every little bit helps. Look for the donation link in this video's description below. We appreciate your support.